This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Sarah Abernethy, Powertrain Marketing Manager for Kenworth. Sarah, thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. So excited to talk uh, with you because Kenworth has delivered a natural gas X15N uh, uh, T680 to UPS. I know this is rolling out in a big way. We're hearing a lot uh, from fleets that have questions about it. So I want to dive right into this. Uh, on your end, what have you heard from fleets regarding natural gas and the X15N in the T680? Great question, Jason. Thank you so much. So we are getting a lot of chatter and a lot of excitement about the uh, X15N, especially in our T680 products. So a lot of our key on highway customers like UPS are really excited to see this engine come to life. Many of them operate in California and many of them are looking to decarbonize and move down that emission spectrum. And the X15N is a great way to do that. When paired with the T680, which many of those customers, of course, already run today, um, that allows for a, a really smooth transition for them in a platform that they already know and love often um, to a great first to the market, large bore natural gas engine that provides the power that they need in a platform that they know with a fuel that they're familiar with. So it's a really win, win, win combination for customers, of course, for Kenworth and for Cummins as well. We're super excited to see it come to market in the T680. Yeah, so I got to ask, so what's different with natural gas this time? Some would say we've been down this road before, we know how this works, or, or maybe not might fit our application, but how is this different and why should, why should fleets reconsider it? Great question, and this is one that we've heard a lot about. I mean, customers, um, I wouldn't say they have a short memory. They, they know where they've been, right? They have been around the block, and for those of, the, for those of our customers who do have experience with natural gas, it may not have been completely smooth in the first go around. But I would say the difference in this uh, at this stage, and specifically with the X15N, is that Cummins have gone from the ground up in designing this engine. So the engine is designed to be a not only a fuel agnostic platform, but really to be a platform that customers can build a, a, a more, um, shall I say, fuel-friendly um, fleet off of. So what that means is they have really designed this engine to be optimized with the specific components that allow for it to be run with natural gas um, in a way that is different than past engines. There was a lot more integration. There was a, a different, um, I would say, emphasis on the performance before. I wouldn't say as much of an emphasis on the performance and in delivering capability that was more in line with diesel and taking what we've learned in the first go round, some of the um the, the growth areas in that performance of the initial, you know, some of the earlier engines, 12 liter, nine liter and others out there. Um, they've taken that and they've run with it in designing a really efficient, very effective and powerful engine that customers are then going to be able to put to use and drivers are going to enjoy a lot more than they have in maybe prior versions of a natural gas engine. So I think when it comes down to the conversation with drivers, what are they really thinking about this engine? What are they thinking about the performance? That, I think, is where Cummins has put their thought in designing this engine. And I hope and I think we're going to see that um, come to life when customers get it in their hands and get it in their fleets. Yeah, and we've talked a lot with, with Cummins about it as well. Great to hear that on the OEM side. But as the truck OEM, you're, I mean, you're like the ultimate integrator, right? You're getting the engines from Cummins. you got to make sure it's working within fleet specs. Uh, what either what challenges or even even maybe differences should fleets expect if they integrate, integrate these new engines into their fleet spec and, and, tr and into their application? Great question. So there's a couple of differences. Um, at the very basic level, the way that your truck and your frame layout is is going to be will be different from a diesel spec if that's your baseline. Um, if you're coming from another natural gas spec, or if you're familiar with that, you might already have a back of cab tank set up or rail mounted tanks that you are familiar with and that work for your application or the body that you might put on your truck. So the natural gas side of things is very similar, just a different engine, different different platform and updates, right? But for those of, of our customers who are coming over from diesel, um, you're going to need to think about your frame space allocation. So if you're looking for a backup cab tank, allow a couple extra feet of, of wheelbase on that truck to allow for that system to be 
put on the frame there. Um, I think that's really one of the biggest considerations that we have. Um, you'll also want to consider your rear axle ratio and the way that, you know, the torque curve performs relative to diesel um, is going to be a little bit different. So Cummins has been really great in working through that with customers. Our own tech support team is as well to ensure that we're putting a, a truck that is spec correctly for the job in the customer's hands. We don't want it to be geared improperly and then you don't see the fuel economy benefit that you're looking for, or it might not have quite the right power and torque curve for the application or the loads and grades that your uh, customer might experience. So really having an open dialogue with customers, understanding where the truck will be put in place, where it'll be um, put in service, and then making sure that this X15N is set up for success on our platform to get into that role and to do the job effectively and perform well for our customers. Yeah, and actually that gear ratio and rear axle ratio is really interesting too because I think the narrative there, especially in the diesel world, has been pushing to such fast ratios, pushing that down speeding, um, really getting that fuel efficiency. But I think that's a great highlight here of if you're moving to a different fueled engine, you might have to rethink some of those things or, or maybe just take it uh, uh, as, a, uh, as what's going to meet your application there. Yes, it is not a copy paste. That's the name of the game. That's the conversations we're making sure our sales team is armed and ready to have with customers and with our dealers to say, we know, you know, your diesel spec, you know it better than anybody, right? But we've got to make sure that we can put the natural gas version of that spec in place for you to be successful in your job. Right. No. And I mean, even in the diesel world, people kind of uh, you get used to your ratio, right? There's a ratio. You trust that ratio. You like that ratio. But but changes definitely need made when you go to a different powertrain. Um, you mentioned earlier decarbonization, which I think is really interesting, too. What is the conver conversation surrounding that? What are you hearing from your fleet customers in terms of how they're looking at natural gas to achieve their decarbonization strategies? Great question. And I think this is where natural gas can really shine. Um, natural gas, of course, can be, you know, procured from a uh, fossil fuel based source, of course, um, but there's also renewable natural gas. So if a customer really does have a strong ESG goal or is looking to decarbonize, looking into renewable natural gas for their fleet is a great place to start. And if you can now do that and also have the power and, you know, the capability that you have today with your diesel um, fleet opportunities, that opens a lot of doors for, for customers who may not have been able to employ a nine or a 12 liter in their application previously. Um, I will say too that regulations, of course, pay, play a big part in, in this engine and a play a big part in what our engine offerings are for 2024, looking especially at California and other states that will be adopting some of those more stricter um, emissions requirements coming into 25 as well. Uh, but in that sense, right, not thinking just that this is a, a thing I must check the box, I must have this compliant engine, but that it's an engine we hope that they really desire and that then they can look further into additional um, renewable fuel opportunities. Maybe they start with standard CNG that's available to them and you know readily available sources, but then explore what a decarbonization roadmap could look like as they figure out where those RNG sources might be around their fleet operations and hubs. Um, and can really start to, to move the needle a little bit closer to that, that decarbonization journey. So um, I'd say it's a, it's, a, it's a gateway engine in a way to kind of have those yeah. conversations about renewable natural gas. And I think much more so than with past platforms that have been released in the natural gas space. So we're, we're really excited for that. And it's, it's definitely going to be important, of course, for compliance strategies as well, because we do have to be compliant, right? And this engine is compliant in the state of California, which is a really big, important point for a lot of our, our larger fleet customers as well. Yeah, and, and even just understanding uh, its role in that decarbonization process. I mean, uh, to your point, uh, putting out in California, but also having those conversations and, and making people aware of how they're approaching in their fleet operations, how they're tracking the reduced emissions. Because uh, we are at, I don't know, maybe it's just me, I feel like we're at a point where manufacturers, fleets, and even the regulators kind of need to work together to figure out what the decarbonization strategy is, what technologies need support beyond just maybe some that are like battery electric and just getting started right. There are other uh, decarbonization opportunities. So fleets being active in that conversation and understanding how they'll put it to use in that emissions, uh, emissions reduction strategy for sure, I think is important. Absolutely. And, and I'm, I, I like that you brought up battery electric technology too, as, as being, you know, an important part of that journey as well. But 
there are some benefits in bringing this X15 into market just that it's combustion. It is familiar. It's something that people are, are you know, aware of. It's 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 not quite the new frontier, but it really does help us get to the new frontier in terms of a zero emission solution. So it's it's an exciting time. And I'm hopeful that this will be a really great a really great time to be in the industry and to see natural gas hopefully have its uh, its its next its next boom. <laughs> That's right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time. I look forward to talking to you more as uh, the T680 with the X15N rolls out even larger. Appreciate you taking the time. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me.